Hi, and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn, and it's that time of year again. It is Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving begets Black Friday, and Black Friday these days begets Bourbon County Stout. So today I have a little preview of some of the Bourbon County variants that are going to be released this year. And I uh, first and foremost wanted to thank Goose Island for uh, allowing me to have these sample beers to try and see what we can expect. As you guys know, I am a little bit of a fan of Bourbon County Stout. I have said I think on more than one occasion it is my favorite beer. I, I guess don't have a favorite beer, but people ask me so often, I guess I just need to pick one. Uh, it's certainly up there. You know, I think I just have kind of different tiers of beers, and it's definitely up there in uh, the top tier for me. I think as far as uh, barrel-aged Russian Imperial Stouts go, they're at the top. You know, I, I think they do it as good, if not better, than anyone. And uh, Goose Island was the brewery to really start bourbon barrel aging uh, back in, I think it was the early 90s, 92, something like that. And up until rather recently, the past uh, maybe four years, five years or so, uh, it was only uh, just the regular Bourbon County Stout, and it, it just kind of came out. And it was available, which was nice. Those were the days. But, you know, they started to make different variants. They did. They made the coffee, and I think the vanilla, or maybe the coffee was the first year, and then coffee and vanilla. I get confused. And, you know, the hype train kind of built and built and built. And now they do kind of a couple different variants every year. And this year, they're actually in the regular Bourbon County. They're doing a Bourbon County barley wine, which is the first time they've ever done that version of it. And then they're also doing um, the coffee in four packs for the first time. They're also doing the uh, berry blend, which is called the Backyard Rye Bourbon County. And then they're also doing, who is calling me? I'm sure it's someone, you know. Whoever that is, I can wait. Uh, they're doing, yeah, the Backyard Blend, uh, Backyard Rye, and then the Proprietor's Blend. And I, I'm gonna drink them the only way, I guess you should drink a beer in order of hype. Uh, you know, so few people have had any of these that uh, I think hype is kind of interesting uh, to hype a beer that really no one has had, but uh, yeah, I'm super excited. These two are coming in the big formats. This, the barley wine, and the regular Bourbon County are coming in four packs exclusively. And uh, I'm super excited, so why don't we dive into it? I'll talk a little bit about uh, each of the beers. New bottle caps this year, which, you know, to me, being a geek who uses them a little bit, uh, that's kind of cool. So, um, and again, one. Uh, more thank you to Goose Island. Thanks guys for uh, making these beers available to me so I can share them with you guys. All right, Bourbon County Coffee, uh, probably the fourth year that they've done this. Uh, they switch the type of coffee they use every time. It's always uh, Chicago-based Intelligentsia coffee. This year it is Los Immortales coffee. I looked a little bit about it. It's from El Salvador. It is grown, I think, uh, alongside a volcano in uh, volcanic soil. And the coffee, actually the tree that it comes from, I guess there's different cultivars, different types of trees. The, the tree name is bourbon, which I thought was kind of funny. So it comes from the bourbon type of, tr of coffee tree. And uh, the coffee itself is known for being uh, very sweet as the coffee goes, and also uh, quite a bit fruity as well. So, uh, just looking what we have here, uh, very, very dark beer, hardly any uh, carbonation or foam at all, and uh, you know, you can kind of see through it, but I mean, you're looking at a very dark stout here. <sighs> Intense coffee notes. Now I've heard, I know previously they would almost overload the coffee up front so it would develop, you know, over a little bit of time. It's pretty overwhelming coffee. It's not, uh, it smells wonderful. It's not that kind of um, acidic roast note. It's certainly not the ground note. It's a roasted cup of coffee flavor. 
got a lot of fruit in it. Where like the first year reminded me of vanilla chocolate coffee. Uh, or, or vanilla and chocolate and coffee ice cream. This one is much more like dark red berries. Like there's almost jam in here. Yeah, a really nice, uh, like a light roast coffee. Not that big, dark, bold flavor. And tons of fruit. In addition, you do get some of the vanilla and some of the bourbon as well. This is the only of the three that's actually in bourbon barrels. The other two are rye. Very silky smooth. Almost no carbonation, which is interesting. It is quite sweet. It's a sweet beer overall. Like toffee covered fruit. Toffee with berries mixed into it. You definitely have some of that um, almost like Heath Bar in there too. Like a nutty caramel note to it. Um, I don't get a lot of just straightforward bourbon. I think the coffee kind of envelops that quite a bit. So you almost have some of that, that like liqueur chocolate caramel. If there was like a liqueur caramel with some chocolate drizzled onto it, that's kind of what I would be getting here. Um, really lovely. Um, I think this is one of my favorite Bourbon County coffees in a, in a little while. Um, the first one holds a near and dear place in my heart, but oh, man, it's really, really good. I mean, 97, 98, 97, I don't know. I mean, it's awesome. It's awesome. Uh, I'm really happy with it. I love the fruitiness. Um, sometimes fruit in beers, you know, when you actually add the fruit can be a little bit much for me, but I just love how much fruit is in this coffee. Um, really, really nice. We are off to a great start. All right, so next, the Backyard Rye. Uh, this is, uh, I think, mulberries, boysenberries, marionberries uh, in uh, rye barrels. Uh, kind of crimped that, crimped my style a little bit on that one. Um, another interesting thing, these are all different alcohols. So this was 13.4, this is 12.7. And to me, I would think the coffee would have the lowest alcohol because you're actually dumping coffee into the beer. But uh, this one is actually uh, quite a bit lower, almost a full percent lower. And it's got, yeah, Marionberry, Mulberry, and Boysenberry. And it's in rye whiskey barrels. And it comes in at 12.7%. See if we can get a little bit of, there we go, a little bit of foam on that one. But again, not much, but certainly more than the first. Um, about the same color, you know, it might be a little bit darker, but it's hard to say. Okay, this is a berry. This is jammy smelling. To me, it smells like, I mean, I have to admit, I, I'm not sure I know what Marionberry and Mulberry Jam smells like, but it's like dark. It's not like a raspberry. It's like a blackberry, but like a sweet blackberry, not one of those like more bitter ones or acidic ones. Yeah, um, chocolate. Um, jam, not chocolate jam, chocolate and jam, dark jam, dark berries. I know that's obvious from what it is. Now, let me tell you what you're not getting here. You're not getting overwhelmed with the same caramel and vanilla that you did. You're not overwhelmed, but you, it's not quite there. The berries are very much assertive here. Again, you know, this will drop out over time. That berry note I noticed from the bramble rye that they did in the past with, I think it was blackberries and raspberries. The raspberries I felt at first were too much, but they are pulling out over time now. I had one recently and I'm pretty happy with where it's going. This to me is a little strong, but then again, you know, if you say you're gonna put the berries in there and it's subtle and then drops off to nothing soon, 
you know, is it worth it at that point? Um, the uh, roast coffee notes that you can sometimes get from Bourbon County are not there. It's really just uh, chocolate and, and just intense jam. Maybe a minuscule amounts of vanilla. I'm trying to see if I can pick up some rye. I don't know if it's just my mind or if I'm trying to pick out some spice in here, but there might be that too. I think you definitely do get some spice here in the, in the uh, palate. Also sweet, a little bit of acidity. Those berries have added acidity to this beer. It is by no means a sour beer or a tart beer. It's just a big, bold Russian pure stout with a hint of acidity to it. You do get a little bit more of the spirit from the barrel in this one as well. You can tell that there's some booze in here, which I like, it's Bourbon County, you're supposed to have that. Um, and it is kind of more of a spicy note than I'm used to with Bourbon County. You know, maybe it's just me making this up, but I think I am picking up some of those rye notes here. The mouthfeel is almost as big and thick and creamy as the coffee. Very nice, huge mouthfeel, which is always one of the things I love most about Bourbon County. It's just how big it is uh, when you're kind of swishing it around in your mouth. Um, I like it quite a bit. Let me just take one more small sip here. Got some of the carbonation on that one. I, I wanted to kind of pour it and drink it fast to see if I can get some of that carbonation in there. Probably would have blown off pretty fast otherwise. Um, I like it. I like that you get the spirit. To me, I would want to taste this beer in another year. I think that's where it will be for my personal palate. But some people who like, you know, like the Bramble Rye and like something a little bit more fruit forward, I think that'll be very nice. People are trying to come into the store. Um, I'm busy. Um, so, what time is it? Ah, they're early. Um, very nice. I don't like it as much as this one, but it is a very, very nice fruited stout. I just don't think I'm as fan, a fan of that style as much. Although the cherry rye was good too. Um, you know, I'll go 94 with this guy. Very solid beer. Um, like it quite a bit. All right, on to the proprietor's blend. Like I said, uh, Goose has claimed they're gonna change this up every year and it will always be for the Chicago market only, making it the most hyped. Uh, this year it's coconut, and I think that's a good place to start. Um, you know, you tef definitely get a lot of coconut from the barrels, so I guess it's a way to kind of enhance the natural qualities of Bourbon County. Now I believe it is in rye again. This one comes in at 14.1%, the strongest of the three. Um, yeah, so uh, very limited release here. And I'll cheers with this one. Whoa, holy cow. There's like coconut floating in this thing. There's, I, mean, you, I wonder if you can see, but like, can you see this? At all? Probably not. No. I don't know if you can see even like rolling up on the sides there. There is coconut in there. Straight up coconut floating in this beer. I think it is. It's either that or something pretty nasty got in there. Wow, that's surprising. Okay, so uh, the, this beer is uh, again dark and there's chunks of coconut floating in it. All right, uh, let's give it a sniff. Mounds bar. I mean, chocolate and coconut here. I am getting some of the background spirit as well. It's a toasted coconut. It's very much like some of those really, really coconutty stouts that you sometimes get. If you had your uh, eyes closed and you smelled it, you'd be like, wow, that's some kick ass barrels. They've got that thing aging in. You 
know, a lot of coconut, um, maybe a little too much. I don't know if it drops off. I've heard coconut drops off quickly. Um, you know, I'd like to see a tiny bit more integration here, but that said, I like that you get the underlying chocolate note. You're not getting a lot of that roasty coffee thing that you can sometimes get from uh, these big stouts. It's a deep, rich chocolate, some spirit, some vanilla, and some coconut. And coconut and vanilla can be so close when you're talking about the barrel character of a beer. There might be some underlying fruit note as well. Tons of booze and coconut and vanilla and chocolate here. People are gonna love this one. Man, the most viscous mouthfeel. The other ones were just soft. This one's like slick and full and like just full of these like bourbony rye notes in the coconut. Um, it's very nice. This one really, to me, tastes like a Mounds bar turned into one of those liqueur candies. It truly does. Um, a lot of coconut here. Um, you know, I think you could probably pull the coconut down a hair. I think that'll happen in time. I know that they like, like I mentioned earlier, to release these a little bit fuller um, and let them kind of develop. The door is locked, guys. Chill. Um, what a nice beer. Um, so, um, really, really nice. I, I like how all three of these are integrated so well. I think that is one of the things that puts Bourbon County kind of, to me, is a notch above the others. It's just, you're dealing with a lot of components here when you start adding stuff to it, and they tend to really nail the balance of this stuff. This one, uh, very much so. I mean, I could easily go 97. I'll go 96 plus, 97, you know. Uh, I'll go 96 plus here. I really like that coffee. This coffee probably could have been 98. This is 97, 98. This to me is 96, 97. Really, really solid stuff. Whew. Well, whoever comes in for the tasting today is in for a treat. Uh, again, thank you so much to everybody. Thank you to Goose Island. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm gonna try to get this up as soon as I possibly can. For now, I've gotta go drink some beer with uh, coconuts floating in it and open up my store. Guys, have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much as always. Please keep the comments and the emails coming in. Um, some fun new stuff on the uh, store, or sorry, uh, uh, not in the store, uh, on the website. So take a look there as well. I always appreciate your comments like I just said a moment ago. Guys, thank you so much. I have got some world-class beer to try right here. Uh, and hey, I'm sure you got some floating around. Go open up a bottle. It's uh, Thanksgiving, and then you will too. Thanks, guys.